So welcome to my SEMrush tutorial. Here I'm gonna be showing you how to use SEMrush for SEO, but more specifically, I'm gonna help you find some of your biggest competitors, target some of their best and low hanging fruit keywords, as well as find backlinks. And then a little bit at the end, I'll help you find some even more keywords that you can go after for those quick and easy wins. In case you haven't gotten started with SEMrush yet, I will leave my link in the description. And if you click that, you can get a free trial of SEMrush so you can follow along with me, whether you have it or you don't. Let's begin. So the first thing you wanna do is enter in your domain. I'm gonna be in the organic research section. I have my domain here. If you are brand new and you are a beginner, don't worry about it. If you don't have your website up and running, what you can do is simply type in some keywords into Google and then simply look for some websites that are a little bit smaller, don't have as much authority, and then you can find competitors of them. That's what we're gonna be doing here. So now that we're up to date here, you have your website or one that's similar to yours. Once you enter it in here, what you wanna do is simply click on the competitors link right here. This is gonna be beneficial because we can see some of the people who are also ranking, so for a lot of the related keywords, and we can see what they're going after, what their backlink profile is gonna be like, and so on and so forth. For this, there's a lot of good ones here. I'm familiar with most of these, but as this example, I'm gonna go with Chris Digital. I think he has a great website, and I'm just gonna use him as an example. So find one that you are looking for that has like more of a higher competition level and simply click on their link here. All right, now that we are here, what we wanna do is simply click on positions. So now we enter into finding some really juicy keywords that our competitors have. All right, and here's the cool thing about it. What we can do is filter by specific keywords. We can go by positions. We can go by volume, which is how much traffic each keyword is getting. We can go for uh, the keyword difficulty, which we wanna go for the low hanging fruit ones, which are gonna be right here. Intense also a good one. So like the commercial and transactional ones are usually gonna be the, usually a little bit harder to rank because a lot of people are going after them. That could be like, you know, pricing guides, comparison guides, reviews, and so on and so forth. But here's the cool thing right off the bat. What I would recommend doing is going to positions and let's look at the top 10. So like, what is he gonna be ranking in for the top 10? Let's let that load. Okay, and even better, what we can do is go for the keyword difficulty. So instead of just going to very easy, what we can do is have a range right here. So we can go from zero to 29, which is gonna be easy. This is gonna get all the easy and very easy keywords that he's ranking for, and we can see them starting right here. Now, of course, if you want to change this around, if you click on it once, it's gonna go from the higher keyword difficulty first, probably 29, yep, so we can go right here. And just like that, we have a big competitor, you know, obviously a competitor of you based upon your website. We have all of their easier to rank keywords just spit out for you perfectly right here. And what you can do just to give you a little bit more, we can kind of take a look through. I can give you some idea here. So coupons are always great. Anytime you have a product and a coupon, that's like just a pretty much I want to buy, right? Transactional. I'm looking to buy and is there a coupon so I can save money? Lifetime deal is another great one. They're looking to save money, kind of similar to a coupon. Pricing is great. So I did this in a different video talking about funnel scripts headline. I believe I am ranking for something that's very similar to that and I come up with it, uh, but that's a good one. A uh, one funnel away challenge bonus. Bonuses are great keywords because someone's pretty much saying, I want to buy this. Can I get something of extra value when I go along with it? Once again, another really good one here. And despite the fact a lot of these have low volume, don't worry about that. First and foremost, let me share that I've used so many SEO tools. This is usually like a ballpark guess. Sometimes it can be a whole lot more, sometimes it can be less, and sometimes it can be right on the money. But even if you are getting a low amount of traffic like that, when you build a lot of articles based upon these easier to rank keywords, that's how you can really snowball in the beginning. Plus, you don't really need a whole lot of backlinks to start you know, showing up on the first page of Google, which is a good thing. So this is how you can go through and pretty much see some of the best keywords that they're ranking for, some of the ones that are going to be a little bit easier to rank and that's a great place to get started especially if you're a beginner heck even if you're maybe intermediate and you see like a juicy keyword here you're still going to have a much easier time ranking assuming the fact that you have some authority okay so we have that down now how about some backlinks maybe we found some keywords that we want to make articles about what about actually moving them up in google so we can get them obviously to the top as high up as we can what we can do now is go to backlink analytics and if you look at the left side we're going to simply click right here using the same website all right, in case you're not familiar with this, we have the authority score. I did a separate video on this, but I'll read it here. It's their proprietary metric measuring the domain's reputability. It accounts for the number of quality of its backlinks, organic search traffic, and overall authenticity of its profile. 
So it says good and niche relevant. This domain is a good backlink profile and is niche relevant. A link from this domain would likely benefit your profile. So that's a good one. That's a good thing to see. They got a natural profile. Now, if this wasn't natural, usually that means there's just like tons of spammy links. Like say, for example, someone went to Fiverr and they bought 10,000 links to the website. Never a good thing. Okay. Link power is not too bad. Organic traffic, you know, not so bad, but overall a good authority score. But the main thing we're going to be looking for here is going to be backlinks. Let's click on this right here. All right, and once it's loaded, you can notice it's gonna go by the authority score here. So usually the higher up ones mean they're gonna be so much better. Keep in mind, that's not always going to be the case. You can get a, say, a backlink on a Wix website, say like someone, a Wix website that someone created. And anytime anyone can go in there and just put in a link themselves, it doesn't mean it's gonna be all that powerful, but it will have a high authority score because it has Wix like in the domain, if you know what I mean, okay? So there's a few things I wanna do here. Let's go with active because I don't really care about the ones that have been lost unless maybe you want to go in and try and replace them with yours. And of course, we want to go with follow. There's going to be plenty of no follows here, but if you want to get that link juice, if you want to start moving your articles up in Google, we're going to go with follow here. Okay, and just like that, we have plenty of them right here. There's one out of 100 here through almost 4,000 of them. And we can do one link per referring domain because what that means, say, if he has like five on one single website, it's just gonna show one. This will just declutter our results a little bit for us. So we should have a lot less. There we go, just about a thousand. So as you can see here, we have plenty that we are going through. Some could be a little bit spammy, and this is a this is actually a really good one right here, blog.hubspot data box. I have a few on there myself. And what you can do is just pretty much open it up. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. So something.wix site. This is something that someone just randomly created and it's not gonna be all that powerful like Steam it. He probably has a Steam it there and he just links to himself there. So something like that's not gonna be good. But if you look at these, you can just kind of open them up and look for other ideas where you could possibly get links yourself. So let's actually go to one. Let's see, be free. Some of these are getting a little bit more like spammy, which happens, you know, everyone gets kind of random junky links. Let's go to one, say like Dooley. Let's open this up. Oops, clicked on the wrong button. Let's go back. You gotta click on the, uh, the actual buy it. So right here, here we go. So if you notice, this is good. It looks like, I'm not too familiar with Dooley. It looks like a type of software. This looks like it could be a guest post or just maybe like a link insertion. Yeah, someone else with a link insertion. So what you can actually do here is look for contact. You can reach out to them asking if they're doing guest posts. That's obviously where you go about doing your outreach, but this is obviously where he got a link. It was a good amount of time ago, but they might be you know, still having the opportunity to add more links to do guest posts. But this is pretty much where you can go and see where they're getting their backlinks, do your outreach, and it gives you just a plethora of new ideas and opportunities for you to get links for your website to help you rank much higher. And what you can also do, if you wanna go by new, these are gonna be the freshest ones. You'll notice that one we just saw was a couple years ago, but if say he got one that was recent, you know, it might be much easier for you to do. So Databox, this one is much more recent. I have quite a few links on them. They do a lot of roundups. So it's a little bit easier to say, you know, um, there we go, this person, this person talks about this person. So you could also reach out to them and say like, hey, would it be possible to be featured in one of your articles? I have a website based upon this, this, and this, and just simply do some outreach. You could also find them on one of these where you can reach out to them. And a lot of times they do have the contact where you can go about you know, finding it down here. A help center maybe, that may or may not be it, but once you can find someone to do outreach, that's how you can go about asking, is there any way where I can do a guest post, where I can be a part of your roundup, whatever it's going to be, like what's it going to take for me to be able to do that? That's the whole outreach game, but that's a great way where you can also not only go to your competitors, figure out who they are, now we have some of their keywords, we have some of their backlinks, now what we can do is just really open it up and get even more keywords. So. What I'm gonna do here is go to probably one of my favorite tools on SEMrush. Let's go to Keyword Magic Tool right here. All right, so here we are in Keyword Magic Tool, and what this is gonna allow us to do is to find millions of keyword suggestions for your SEO. We went through finding competitors where we can get backlinks from them as well as some of their best keywords. Now we can go much more broad. So what you wanna do here is enter in a keyword that's pretty broad. So for example, I'm in internet marketing, digital marketing, affiliate marketing, there's so many things related to that. I'm personally just gonna go with affiliate marketing. 
And like I said, you can do this multiple times. So like if I talked about internet marketing, we could do like artificial intelligence or AI software. You could do specific product names like SEMrush or say Shopify, ClickFunnels and so on and so forth. But if you're in a different niche, you could do something like weight loss, you know, um, muscle building, nutrition. I'm just thinking of fitness for some odd reason, but you can do sports like golf, soccer, basketball, whatever it's going to be. Go broad here. Once you enter in your keyword, simply click on search and I'll see you in the next page. All right, and so here we have it. I'll go over this very quickly. I'm gonna go with broad match here so we get a lot of them. We have almost 30,000 keywords. We're on all right now, but questions is a fantastic little feature. This is gonna be any type of like, is affiliate marketing worth it? Is affiliate marketing dead? Like, what does affiliate marketing entail? Like, how do you get started? And so on and so forth. These can be fantastic questions because a lot of times it could be that last question before someone is going to take an action. Let me give you an example. Someone is searching in the Google, let's say they search, does SEMrush do keyword research for SEO? Obviously the answer is yes, as I'm showing you, but if you were creating an article about that, not only are you gonna say, of course it does, allow me to show you. Here's a tutorial, here's how very simply you can do it by entering in a broad keyword, finding, uh, maximizing some of the best keywords you can go after by getting the keyword difficulty and going for the easiest ones and showcasing how it's done where not only do they know they can do it, they now know how, they're gonna be so much more likely to take action where they can go through your link and so on and so forth. And the same thing can go for your niche. So that's a big reason why I'm a believer in questions they're also like not as targeted very often because the volume is usually lower. So people just kind of like say, eh, maybe I'll cover that as a, a frequently asked questions in a bigger post. So I think those are great to go after. Aside from that, we have our keyword difficulty. Once again, I'm going to go from zero to 29. But before I do, there's some intent cost per click. We can exclude keywords if we want. So if something keeps coming up and we want to avoid it, we can add it in there and apply it. But I think that's going to be good here. So once again, let's go from zero, the low hanging fruit for affiliate marketing and 29. Let's click on apply. All right, cool. And what we can also do is sort by the keyword difficulty. So let's click on this once. I think it's going to be highest first. Okay, cool. So let's click on it one more time. There's a good keyword right there and this. All right, perfect. And I've done some keyword research already with affiliate marketing. So I'm actually familiar with these. So I know that some of them are actually pretty good. Uh, so if you look at these, the volumes, like they're not too extravagant, but in my opinion, a lot of these are definitely worth it. Like I said, these a lot of times are also the low hanging fruit because no one feels like creating articles for them because they feel like, what am I gonna write about with affiliate marketing PLR? Well, you can explain it. You can recommend specific PLRs. The really good thing is that what you can do is obviously create a list based upon what that person is interested in if you want as well. Okay, some of these are gonna be like, I'm not sure what Revoluti is. I talked about that previously, but there's a review for it. Reviews are always good ones because it's usually they're looking to make a buying decision if they like it right. Low ticket affiliate marketing, that's a great one. Uh, parenting niche, so you can maybe do affiliate programs. I'm just kind of going over what I would be talking about. Like if this is the keyword, what would I be talking about? Let's see, affiliate marketing best books. Okay, I can think of a few books that are kind of affiliate marketing related like dot com secrets and uh, expert secrets, traffic secrets as well. Best books about affiliate marketing, once again, they're getting a little bit more challenging, but as you can see, this is gonna be the process that I like going through, especially if you're a beginner and you have a website that's just brand spanking new, you're looking to get up and running. These are gonna are gonna allow you to get the much quicker wins. Like if you go for a keyword, let's exit out of this and let's go back here. I think affiliate marketing was 100. Like it's just, there's just no way. None of these don't even bother. It's not gonna happen. Like the amount of authority and just backlinks and just raw power of your website that you need to rank for these. It's just, it's next to impossible for someone new to do it. So that's why I say, go for the low hanging fruit, the ones that are gonna be much easier to do. And you can just keep repeating this process over and over with anything that's gonna be like related to what you're talking about. So even more with marketing, right? Email marketing, internet marketing, network marketing, list building, social media marketing, YouTube marketing, TikTok marketing, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, I am gonna wrap it up. I think I got a good amount of information in so you can at least know how to use SEMrush in a much better way so that you can really help improve your SEO game. Remember, we're walking you through the steps in the beginning. We, we figured out how to find our competitors. We look for some of their juiciest keywords. We were looking for where their backlinks are coming from so we can figure it out, do some outreach emails and see if you can get some as well. And last but not least, we use the keyword magic tool where we can keep going through the process of finding some of the juiciest keywords that are much easier to rank for. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you. And of course, if you haven't gotten to test out SEMrush, I will leave my link in the description where you can click that and get a free trial. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you in my next video.